Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, it says, It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So now begins this long march of the Spirit. A long march where God raises up a family, a family that believed this promise. And then he began to speak to them, line upon line, precept upon precept. And he prophesied that one day there would be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He says, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to them, speaking of the day of Pentecost. And on that day, that power would be restored to mankind. Jesus name. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, welcome today to Word Alive. I'm Pastor Bob Rogers. And I want to say that we are involved in 100 days of prayer and communion. I believe something supernatural happens every time you take communion. And so I want you to join me. You can go on Facebook uh, to Dr. Bob Rogers. And by the way, I spell my name with a D, R-O-D-G-E-R-S. And uh, that information is right there on the screen. But you can be a part of joining us with communion. People are, are joining us from all different countries, all across America. Uh, and I want you to be a part of this. Now, we do it every day, five days a week. We're right there, and I have people join us from uh, that help lead in prayer as well. But on Fridays, I lead in a healing prayer, and we're seeing incredible miracles take place. So be a part of that. Also, I want to send to you the prayer guide that we're using, 100 Days of Prayer and Communion. I'll send this to you. It's front and back. It has places of your greatest needs to pray for, people to pray for. Uh, and then I also have 100 Days of Unbroken Prayer. And this book is a changer. It's a life changer. It'll change your life, I promise you. And uh, this is not hard to read. It's uh, real easy to read. It's about 75 pages. Most people, they buy these thick books. They never read them. Uh, you'll read this, and it'll change your life. Right now, let's go into our services where I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. God comes down and he speaks to the devil and he says, one day there's going to be a reckoning. He says, your seed shall bruise my seed, but at the end, my seed shall crush your head. He was talking about Calvary and what would happen in the plan that God would have of Jesus coming to this earth. And then he tells how it's going to happen. In Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, it says, It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by the Holy Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So now begins this long march of the Spirit. A long march where God raises up a family, a family that believed this promise. And then he began to speak to them, line upon line, precept upon precept, and he prophesied that one day there would be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He says, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to them, speaking of the day of Pentecost. And on that day, that power would be restored to mankind. And in that generation in 1948 would see the coming of the Lord, would see the rise of the Antichrist, would see the rise of a one world government and would also experience the most incredible outpouring of God that's ever come to the face of the earth. That generation's us in this room. But God began to use women. And there are many women here God wants to raise up in an awesome manner. Precept upon precept and line upon line. And then there came a ministries of deliverance. That demons can be cast out. 
One of those men whom God used in a tremendous way was Lester Sumrall. I remember I went and preached for him one time. Five weeks I preached in his church. He had pastored an Assemblies of God church in South Bend, Indiana. And God spoke to him to resign the church and go to the Philippine Islands. He went to Manila. He took a little church there. He started it and he got up to about 150 to 200 people. And in those days, there was a prostitute. Her name was Carlita. And she was arrested by the Manila Police Department. And uh, the arresting officers roughed her up. They pushed her, and as they got uh, into the jail, this one officer pushed her, and when he did, she screamed, and suddenly bite marks came on her back. Not just bite marks, but it had saliva, and it was bleeding. And then the other officer grabbed her by the shoulder and suddenly the same thing happened. Teeth marks, saliva, and blood. That night, both of those policemen died. So she is now placed in jail. That uh, jailer came in there and he pushed her and suddenly bite marks. When a doctor examined her, bite marks, and both the jailer and the doctor died. So it hit the press, girl bitten by demons. It was in uh, America's magazines and news media. And Brother Sumrall fasted for three days. So he went to the mayor and he said, God has spoken to me. I am to go pray for her. And so they go over there and he says, now I, I just need privacy to pray with her. He said, He said, this was not done privately and you will not pray for her privately. So when he went into where she was, the demons in this uneducated girl who could not speak English, suddenly she spoke perfect English. She called him by name, said, you're a son of a, and he said, I am not. My mother was a righteous woman filled with God prayed for me every day and I have power to cast you out, come out. It took about uh, three or four sessions for her totally to be delivered but it hit the media. Later, Carlita became a Sunday school teacher in his church. Here's Brother Sumrall. I'm not talking what I believe I'm reading to you out of the Word of God and if you can't take the Word of God you won't be able to ever get much from God at all if you deny His Word. If you say the gifts of the Spirit are not for today you've already denied His Word because the gifts of the Spirit were given to us in the New Testament church in Paul's day were not given us even before the death of Christ or before Christ Himself. Uh, These are not Old Testament things we're talking about. This is the latest thing God has from heaven. And if he's canceled this out, there is not anything left. You know, preachers can be the funniest people on the face of the earth. You know, if they don't have it, they say it don't exist. Well, in their poor little mind, it may not exist. But I want you to know in the Bible it exists. And in many nations today, the gifts of the Spirit are functioning in a mightier way than ever before in history. So you have to move into the personality of the Holy Ghost. You have to move into the functioning of the Holy Ghost. You have to come to know the Holy Ghost on a, on a personal basis. You have to ask for these things, as I'm going to teach you a little later, in a very strong manner in order to receive these gifts into your life. And, and then <clears throat> it's His will be done. Lester Summerall. He began a ministry that now has spread all over the world of deliverance. And then God began to raise up teachers. I remember until this time, you like good preachers, but suddenly everybody wanted to hear a teacher. They were traveling all over. I need some teaching. And one of the great ones was Kenneth Hagin. I was at Oral Roberts University and I was attending a church, Sheridan Assembly of God Church. And there was an evangelist who came in, and it was Kenneth Hagin. And he started teaching on faith. And it, it went over so well 
that the pastor said, I believe that we're to start a Bible school and Brother Hagen needs to, uh, is going to start this Bible school. And they did it. They did it on every Tuesday night. And then it grew so strongly that he moved out of the church into Broken Arrow. And that's how Rama Bible Training Center began. Brother Hagen came here. We probably over the years sent a hundred of our, of our kids to Rama. Here's Brother Hagen. Well, she said, what do you do? I said, I just walk by faith and not by sight. She said, what do you mean you walk by faith and not by sight? Well, I said, just sit there then and watch me. I moved off of the couch and got a chair and moved it right up in front of her. I mean, I mean, our faces wasn't maybe two feet apart. I said, I'm going to shut my eyes and pray, but now you watch my face. I never right now, right now, I never felt so dead. I never felt so listless. I never felt so unspiritual in my life <laughs> as I do right now. <laughs> Amen. But you keep your eyes open and watch. I'm going to shut my eyes just to shut you out, my wife and, and, and her woman sister. So I just shut my eyes and I said, Oh, Father, oh, I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm so glad I'm born again. I'm so glad I'm in the family of God. I'm so glad that you're my very own father and I'm your very own child. The word of God said, Now unto him that loved us and has washed us from our sins in his own blood. I'm blood washed, blood cleansed. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that through the person and power of the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ dwells in me. The scripture said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. And so you're in me. I'm so glad that God the Father, through the person of the Holy Ghost, indwells me. For God himself said, I'll dwell in them. I'll walk in them. I thank God that the Holy Ghost is in me. For the Bible said, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And the greater one is in me. We used to sing a song, anybody ever in Pentecost, you used to sing a song, it's bubbling, it's bubbling. And that's the way it feels sometimes, just bubbling up inside you. Hallelujah. When I began to acknowledge and confess he's in me, it's he started bubbling, glory to God. Then you begin to feel something, you see. But you had to act in faith first. And, and, and to, to me, it was just like, a, just like a laughter began to build up in me. And before I knew it, it came out my mouth. And I began to laugh. When I began to laugh, see, I had my eyes shut just to shut her out and close everybody out. Uh, she said out loud, your expression changed. Your face changed. You don't look like the same person. Your face looks bright. It just lit up. I opened my eyes and said, sure. I stirred him up that was inside me. Paul told him to stir up the gift that's in you. <laughs> now I'm feeling fine. Glory to God. She said, can I do that? I said, sure you can do that. Sure you can do that. She began to do the same thing. Say the same thing I said. When she got to the same place, she started laughing just like I did. And her face lit up. Hallelujah. We walk by faith and not by sight. The faith message that we here today preached, God used this man to help bring it precept by precept and line upon line. But then God began to do incredible things all over the world. And there became a mass outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the continent of Africa. One of those whom God used was Reinhard Bonnke. He was German. He lived down in, in South Africa. And God took him from a pastor in a small church. And he began to preach from Cape Town to Cairo and had crowds of over one million people. I remember he, he came here. I picked him up at the airport. I was a young, young preacher. I remember now even how he told stories that just burned within me. He had a, a black man who traveled with him. And after he would preach, this, uh, this man would come and he would pray. And he said it was like a, a tornado came in there, a spiritual tornado, and suddenly the people would be slain by in, they would start in the front and it would just move back 
and there could be hundreds of thousands of people just knocked over by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's Reinhard Bonnke. The Holy Spirit is not repelled by our weaknesses. Actually, our weaknesses attract him. Because the Bible says he gives power to the faint. And to those who have no might, he is giving strength. The baptism, the fire of the Holy Spirit is not a supercharge for super saints. It's for those who need power to run the marathon. You don't need power as a reward for a marathon after you have run it. You need it at the beginning to run it. And you shall receive it. And you shall become strong by his grace. Give the Lord a great big praise clap. <laughs> These men were generals. These ladies were generals. And they, God used them to, to touch us in this church. This church is what it is apart because of these generals. And it affected our church. And then God began to raise up a young man. The fact is, uh, my dad and I had traveled to Johannesburg. We were preaching there and there was assigned a young man to drive us. He was our driver and we talked to him. He said, you know, I've always had a dream about coming to America. So my dad said to him, said, Rodney, I want you to come preach for me. Within a month, Rodney Howard Brown called me and he said, Bob, he said, uh, I feel like God wants us to come, me and Adonica. He said, could you line us up in some meetings? And I did. They came here to Louisville and then God began to anoint him. And there became such an anointing of the Holy Ghost laughter and miracles. And, and God has used him all over the world. And we've sent a number of our kids down there to the school. But here's Rodney. These people crying out, oh God, send revival. And they don't realize it's actually not that far away. You actually don't have to work that hard. The Holy Ghost has actually already come. He doesn't have to come again to the earth. He already is in the earth. Has been here for 2,000 years. We don't need another Pentecost. The first one still works. It's not broken. Are you with me? Amen. Holy Spirit didn't leave. Still moving. The winds of heaven are blowing. The fire of God is falling in the earth right now. What, seven billion people on the planet? And the Holy Ghost is moving in China. The Holy Ghost is moving in India. The Holy Ghost is moving in the mountains of Tibet and Nepal. He's moving in Thailand, in Cambodia, in Vietnam. He's moving in the islands of the sea. He's moving in Africa. He's moving in Europe, even now. You won't see this on CNN. You won't see this on ABC. You might not even see this on many Christian channels. But let me tell you, God's not dead and he's not sleeping. He's alive and he is moving in the earth today. There are two kingdoms, the kingdom of God that is advancing at an ever increasing pace. And then there's oh, the kingdom of the world. Praise God. So God uh, began to do it in steps. It began to accelerate from 1948. He began to raise up evangelists. He began to raise up prophets. He began to raise up uh, teachers. He began to raise up pastors. And he began to raise up apostles. Many times those apostles pastored churches. But they had exceptional anointings. I remember when God called me to preach, I was 22 years old. I was pastoring a, a church of 40 people. We had grown to 20 people in just three short months. I was very discouraged. I thought maybe that uh, I needed to, you know, look at something else. And my dad said, son, I want to take you with me. I'm going to Korea. There's a pastor there in Korea that God's really using. In those days, he was running 40 5,000 people. 
And today it's over a million people. But I went there to uh, Seoul, Korea. I met uh, Pastor Cho. I met his mother-in-law. Law. They took us to Prayer Mountain. It totally renewed me. Um, I later became a member of the board. I've preached in his church on numerous times. And I'll tell you a little secret. If he didn't like the sermon you preached and he would interpret your sermon, if he didn't like the sermon you preached, he preached another sermon in Korean <laughs> and you uh, just went on. But here is Dr. Yungi Cho. For a long time, I wanted to do the ministry of Jesus Christ. 1958, when I first pioneered my work, it was so difficult because I pitched a tent in the slum area. And when I began to visit people, they were so depressed and so poverty stricken. They were actually living from hand to mouth. And when I was preaching the kingdom of God to them, they said, Pastor, instead of telling us about the future kingdom of God, why don't you give us a little bit of that kingdom of God here on the earth presently? We need some rice. We need blanket. We need healing. We need love. And if the kingdom of heaven is so beautiful, why doesn't that God show us a little bit of that kingdom of heaven to us right now? So I prayed, oh, Jesus, by the power of Holy Spirit, you must support my ministry. You please come and confirm your word. But as the evening service approached, I changed my prayer. I said, Jesus, please send easier case. If you ever really send the blind, deaf and dumb and crippled, then I'll be at a loss as to what to do. So just only send those who has slight flu or stomach trouble. Then I'll really exercise my faith, otherwise I'm scared. But that evening when I went to tent church, that place was packed up with people. So much needs were there. People were expecting to get their need met by Jesus. And I really preached a powerful message. But inside of me, I was trembling in turmoil with fear. And after the sermon, I said, brothers and sisters, since I gave announcement this morning, and since you didn't have enough time, so I don't think you have brought any heavier case of sick people. So I'll start praying for those one who have flu or stomach trouble. <laughs> then one young man far back there says, Sir, I said, what is that? I have brought you a born deaf and dumb. I said, oh God, I told you not to bring them. <laughs> I told you that I'm not ready to pray for those one. But why do you bring now deaf and dumb? Oh, I was sick in my stomach. But you know, there was no place for me to hide. So I stretched out myself up like, bring them up, bring them up. So here, two girls were led on the platform. One was tall, skinny. The other was uh, short and pleasantly plump. <laughs> so I laid my hand on both of ears and I rebuked the deafness and I claimed healing, but I could not pull out my hand. I was desperate and I prayed some more and I rebuked some more and I couldn't wait any longer. So finally I jerked away my hand, turned around and I clapped hand on her right ear on the left ear and she nodded. Then I said, Papa, she says, Father, I said, Mama, Mama, then I said, praise the Lord. She said, praise the Lord. Suddenly it dawned upon me that she was healed. Oh, hallelujah. So whether we realize it or not, a little bit of all that is deposited within us. And when the Holy Spirit begins to move, he starts stirring that up. He starts stirring that up and sometimes he may use us to heal. He may use us to evangelize. He may use us to pray. He may use us to do whatever God wants done. Today, I want us all to stand and I want those who help us to pray. I want you to come down here, come down here to the front. 
If you're here and you've never received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, God wants to fill you now. If you're here and you've had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God wants to stir it up again. If you're here and you're sick in your body, God wants to totally heal you and make you well in the name of Jesus. If you are undergoing demonic attack, God will deliver you. God will do whatever you need done. He will heal you, set you free, and He'll do it today. All right, begin to come. Come on, just worship the Lord here today. Well, praise God. I hope you enjoyed today's program. And again, I want to send to you the book entitled 100 Days of Unbroken Prayer and Our Prayer Guide. I, I want to say uh, how much I appreciate you viewing. And uh, many of you have been a partner with us over the years. And uh, right now we're going through a real difficult time where we need your help, especially in Israel. We have a Christian TV station there. It's located actually in the Palestinian sector. We have many wonderful Palestinian friends as well as Jewish friends. But there has been uh, the, the war, the, the, it's just been terrible. Uh, many of the people have had difficulty even getting food. I've sent 10,000, then I sent the next week 12,000. I sent the next week another 10,000. And I need your help. We're helping to preach the gospel, preach hope, preach peace in the midst of hell. That's all I can say. And so whatever you can do would be greatly appreciated. But you can, uh, you see my information there. And uh, I, I just ask you to help us as liberally as you can. And I want to send this to you, and I want you to join us as we pray unbroken prayer, 100 days without missing a day. And uh, when you do that, something really powerful happens. But I want to thank you for viewing, and I look forward to seeing you next week at the same time. I will direct you. The Bible says, be ye not unwise, but understanding. Understand what the will of the Lord is. If we will seek Him, God will show us how to be blessed. God will break off of us whatever the devil has put on us in Jesus' name. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.